Big speech on his Mormon faith today is putting the spotlight on that religion. One prominent Mormon is uh, Glenn Beck. He's the author of a huge bestseller entitled An Inconvenient Book, debuted at number one on the New York Times bestsellers list. He's also uh, a member of our own CNN family. He's the host of a program on headline news that airs every night at 7 and 9 p.m. Eastern. Glenn, thanks very much for joining us. You bet, Wolf. How are you? And congratulations on the, uh, the book. It's a, it's a powerful book. I want to get to it in yeah. a moment. I, I, I assume you're even been surprised at how well oh, it's I, being received. I'm living the American dream. It's a great country, isn't it? Yeah, it is. All right, let's talk a little bit about the speech. Uh, you were there. You went down to College Station to listen to Mitt Romney. Uh, what yeah. did you think? Um, I thought it was a home run. I didn't know what to expect. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't know what he was going to do, if he was going to get into doctrine or whatever. And I, I was hoping that he would, um, I mean, if I was giving the speech for this is why well, I'll never be president, I would have said, you know, if I am a Mormon and I'd vote for another Mormon because he's a Mormon, I'd be a pinhead. If I uh, see a Mormon running for president and I won't vote for him because he's a Mormon, I'm also a pinhead. There's more to the story. He said that in a much nicer way. You know, but he's but, but the question the, the question is, uh, I, I assume he delivered this speech because he and his political strategists were nervous that some Christian evangelicals don't like the Mormon faith, and he yeah. wanted to try to reach out to them. Do you believe well, he converted any of those who, who who see Mormon the Mormon faith as a cult? Did he did he win over some political support? Oh, I you know, Wolf, I I, I, don't, I don't know because I I mean. Uh, Normal people might have questions about the faith and say, well, I don't know about this, I don't know about that. But believe me, go ask a Mormon if you really want to know. You'll never get them to shut up about the faith. They'll be over with the bikes and the white T-shirts, you know, the white shirts and the ties before you, before you know it. Um, so I don't know if you really want to know. I wonder how many people um, can be converted um, who hold that position. You know, I, I spoke to Jerry Falwell right before he passed away. I talked to him off the air and off uh, on the air about um, this uh, very topic. And he said two things to me. On the air, he said, it's not an issue. We're not electing pastor-in-chief. The thing he told me off the air was, he said, well, I disagree with the Mormon theology. He said, every Mormon that I've ever met has been a decent human being. Um, well, that's not, of course, universally true. There are bad people in, in all faiths. Um, that's the way we should be looking at this. I'm, I'm not going to, as a Christian, I'm not going to not vote for Joe Lieberman because he's a Jew and, and doesn't look at the Messiah the same way. I voted for Joe Lieberman. I'm not going to vote for somebody because they're a Presbyterian or a Catholic? That doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't sound like America. Uh, I, on that point, I'm sure millions and millions of people totally agree. Now, you have an incredible story yourself, and you tell some of it in your new bestseller, An Inconvenient Book. Uh, but tell our, tell our viewers a little bit, what attracted you to the Mormon faith? Because you weren't born a Mormon. You converted. No, yeah. Um, honestly, to tell you the truth, my wife wouldn't marry me, you know, unless we had a faith. And so we went on a church tour. And, and because she our... wasn't a Mormon either. No, she wasn't. Um, and it was the last thing I wanted to be because, you know, I, I, look, back in the 1800s when uh, Mormons first started running for uh, the Senate, the, the papers actually said that Mormons had horns on their head. And I don't know if I don't know if mine are showing right now, but, you know, I've heard all this stuff about Mormons, and I did my own investigation on several churches. What attracted me to this, honestly, was the people and the families. I got to the point to where I saw the families and I saw the difference that it made in people's lives, and I wanted it. And if they had Kool-Aid in the basement, I got to the point to where, okay, I'll drink the Kool-Aid. Unfortunately, they don't, which would be nice if they did, because then I could wash down all the cookies that we seem to eat. Um, but I just wanted my life to be changed. I honestly wanted that moment of redemption because I was, Wolf, um, in 1999, I was a guy that was struggling to pay a rent of $695 a month. Um, I'm not that guy anymore. My, my, um, uh, my life has totally changed, and it's not just about money. It is about a wealth of friends and a wealth of, of peace, a peace of mind and peace of conscience. Why do you call it an inconvenient book? Marketing. Uh, the first chapter, I mean, it's 21, it's 21 of the world's biggest problems. The first chapter is about global warming, and it's the solution to those problems. And uh, it, it, in a nutshell, it starts with global warming. It ends with what's really, I believe, going on the border and why we don't solve it. Um, and then everything in, the, in between, between, you know, dating and marriage and, and everything else, um, it's got a lot of comedy in it. Um, and I think the biggest problem is, is our political correctness. We're not allowed to really exchange ideas. 
ideas. We're not allowed to talk about global warming in, unless you have the right side or the border, unless you're a racist or whatever. And it goes back to Mitt Romney. When you look at what's happening with Mitt Romney, this is insane that in America we can't appreciate each other's faith. I look at faith as uh, giant pieces of, of a puzzle, that everybody has a piece of the puzzle, some bigger than others. Here, and, here's a question that, uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, that, that uh, is intriguing. Let me get your thought. His father, Mitt Romney's father, George Romney, was governor of Michigan. He ran for president back in 1968. And at that time, virtually no one cared that he was a Mormon. It, was, mm -hmm. it really wasn't an issue. It wasn't a problem at all. Why is it a problem right now? What has happened it's in America? It's not. Whoa, the, why, what has happened in this country that all of a sudden Mitt Romney is finding that he's got to address this issue? I don't think it is a problem. I think it is a problem for the media. I think it is a problem for those who have an agenda in the own, in their own conservative uh, party. I mean, I, I really, really like Mike Huckabee. He is a fine, good man. I know him. I have met him. But for him to come out and say, well, I don't know if I would vote for a Mormon or not, is, is really, honestly, reprehensible. It's not, that's, that's just not the way we, we do things in America. There is no Church of England here. You don't have to subscribe to a, a certain uh, faith. As Mitt Romney said in his, in his speech today, it's not about our faith. It's about our values. It's about our principles. I just want to know a man believes in something, that it, it, that it makes him a better person, makes it a better family, which makes better neighborhoods, and makes a better country in the end, and will actually stand up for what he believes in. That's, that's the way you vote for a president. Glenn Beck uh, has got a, a, radio, a hugely successful radio show, a hugely successful television show, now a number one bestseller on the New York Times called An Inconvenient Book. I hope you'll come back and join us in the Love Situation to. Room.